Now, gents, I need to be transparent. As you can see from this right here, I own a lot more than three coats. In fact, I counted it up here in the office. I got about 30 of them. Now, I'm a bit of an outlier because I talk about clothing for a living and I live in a cold area where coats are required. That being said, how many coats on average does a man actually need to own? My answer, three. But which three? You're probably wondering. That gentleman is the subject of today's video. Coming in at number three on my list of coats that every man needs to own, I've got a stylish coat. This leather jacket I'm wearing right here, I absolutely love it. Makes me feel great, fits me like a glove. What I like about it, it's lightweight. It's made actually from goat skin, so it's really smooth, just beautiful to the touch. In addition, it's not black, it is navy. So when it's next to a black jacket, it just looks a little bit different. I love that small color distinction right there. It just sets it apart from all the other jackets out there. The styling is relatively simple clean. It's a classic moto jacket, but perhaps that's too simple. You want something that's going to grab a little bit more attention with the texture. Check out this chocolate suede right here. Beautiful classic jacket in a material that a lot of guys shy away from. But with the jacket like this, you're looking for compliments. You're looking for a jacket. When people see it, when the ladies see it, they're going to want to touch it. It just draws them in with the texture, with the overall feel, with the look. Notice the small details and the texture right there on the shoulders. These are put there to draw attention to the shoulders because when your shoulders look larger, you look taller in general. But maybe chocolate's too plain. You want a color that's going to have you stand apart from the crowd. Now, a jacket like this maybe isn't going to be interchangeable but it is one that's going to grab attention, one that's going to be able to help you stand apart from all the other guys out there. I think the key to wearing a colored suede jacket is having the confidence to pull it off. First up, look in your wardrobe. Are you already wearing items of that color? I know for me, sports jackets, I already had a couple green sports jackets. So I knew this was one of my go-to colors that I would easily bring this right into my wardrobe. The other key to wearing a jacket with color, don't try to overpower it with other items in your wardrobe. This is going to be the centerpiece. So don't try to wear shoes that are going to draw attention away from it. Shoes that are brighter in color, shoes that maybe have a high contrast. No, go with your simple, clean, good looking shoes, but ones that, yeah, aren't going to draw as much attention as the jacket. With your trousers, keep them simple. With your shirt, keep it simple, keep it clean. You can go for a small repeating pattern, but overall, the jacket is going to be the centerpiece. Now, on a side note, if you're interested in suede jackets with a pop of color, check this out. This is the first look of a line of jackets I'm looking to put together. If this at all interests you, look at those colors, absolutely beautiful. Now, here's how it's going to work. I'm not going to make these jackets unless I hear from enough of you guys that you're actually interested in this. I'm going to go back and forth on email, let you guys know what colors I'm considering. We've already got the early designs. As you can see, we had some prototypes made, but what I'm looking for here is to be able to make a $2,000, a $3,000 jacket and be able to sell it to you at a fraction of the price. Yes, cutting out the middleman. I know you've heard it many times, but this is me actually doing this. And I'm excited because you guys ask, where do I get these jackets from? And a lot of these jackets that I wear in the videos, you can't find anymore. So I want to do a limited run. I'm looking maybe a hundred at each type, but uh, if we don't have the interest, I'll keep it to a very limited run. But guys, I need to hear from you down in the description of today's video. Click on that link, enter your email. Let me know if you're at all interested in this project. Now, leather, of course, is not the only option when it comes to a great looking stylish coat. So right here, as you can see, I'm wearing a double breasted top coat made with a wool cashmere. And look right here at the design. That double breasted right there is going to have it stand out from all the other jackets out there. It's a top coat, not an overcoat. A top coat is usually worn over more formal clothing. And you can tell that by the style of this jacket, although the color, in my opinion, does make this a bit more casual. Now, for me, what makes this jacket are these wide peak lapels. On most jackets out there, you're going to see notch lapels. That's one style. Peak lapels, though, are going to be a bit more formal. Now, on occasion, you're also going to see shawl lapels out there, especially in formal clothing. I would say stay away from it. What I like about this jacket, even though it's a formal jacket, I could actually wear it and dress it down because of the color of the jacket itself. Also, the fact it's made from wool cashmere is going to make it very soft, very nice to the touch, and it's going to be very functional, very warm, hence why wool is always sought after in winter clothing. Lastly, notice the length of the jacket. It comes up just above the knees where a mid length jacket should hit. It's going to fully cover the buttocks, so it's going to do a very functional job of keeping the wearer warm. At the same time, it's probably not a great car coat, one that's going to enable you to get in and out of vehicles easily. But, you know, for style sakes, if you really like it, I would say still go for it. Now, this next jacket is interesting because it's a hybrid of different styles. First up, when you look at it, you look at the lapels, you look at the overall style, the double breasted in the front, you immediately may think peacoat. 
And because of those style features alone, I would actually classify this as a type of peacoat, but it's not a classic peacoat because the weight is relatively lightweight. Overall, this is a jacket that if you're over in Northern California, this would be a great one to add to your wardrobe. This is going to be something if it's 60 degrees, 50 degrees outside, you'll be able to wear it and feel good. It's also going to be a jacket that has a unique pattern. Classic peacoats are going to be solid navy. This one right here has a small check pattern that you don't actually, it's actually a relatively large check pattern, but you don't notice it until you get close. It's muted overall in style and that's what I love about it. It's not till you get close that you notice something different about this jacket. Now, the length on this one is great, especially if you're driving in a vehicle. Why? It's about three inches shorter than that last jacket, but that three inches makes a big difference. My buttocks is still covered, so it's going to keep me warm. At the same time, it's only going to my mid thigh, so it's going to give me more room when I'm getting in and out of a vehicle to be able to move my legs and not feel constricted. Now, the material here, virgin wool, not as soft as wool cashmere, but incredibly soft and all that virgin means is it simply hasn't been recycled. So, you're going to have longer strand wool. It's going to do a good job of holding its shape and wool, as you know, has great insulating properties. I also like the functional aspect of this jacket and pea coats in general because I can button this button right here and I can protect my neck, throw on a scarf, I'm good to go. Now, what about the real thing? You bet a pea coat is going to make this list. Absolutely love the pea coat as a stylish coat for any guy out there. So, the great thing about this, how incredibly functional it is, but also the military history behind the peacoat. In case you don't know, this was an issued item with the United States Navy. Also, I believe in the British Navy, you had this as well. Basically, navies around the world have used this for a long time. So, there were a lot of them out there that were military issue. Nowadays, it's going to be a lot easier simply to find them at stores because it's become a style icon. The great thing about the peacoat, it's made from a little bit of a coarser, heavier wool. What that means and why they used wool to begin with, because wool can absorb about 50% to 60% of its weight in water and still actually feel dry. Keep the wear warm. And that's why these were worn on boats. But when it comes down to it, this is just a great looking piece. I think it works with most body types. Just a great style. One that I still think so many men could pull off, but they don't. And I absolutely love when you button it up all the way, cover the neck, you've got those lines. There's something about the look that, in my opinion, is just classically stylish. The next jacket on my list, the straight up functional jacket. We're talking about a jacket that just does its job. It doesn't have to be flashy. It understands, okay, if it's just below zero and cold or if it's 40 degrees below zero and friggin' cold, you want a jacket that's going to keep you warm. So, the number one job of your functional jacket is to keep you warm through insulation. Insulation works in two ways. First up, it's going to insulate you from the outside from those cold temperatures and then it's going to keep your body heat from escaping. Those two things right there are what makes a great functional jacket work. So, with this jacket right here, we see one of the usual suspects, wool on the outside. When woven in a dense weave, wool does a pretty good job of stopping the wind and does an excellent job of keeping out the cold and keeping the heat in. Now, on the inside of this jacket, that's where we get to see there's a second layer of down baffles. So, basically, they're leveraging the insulating power of down. Now, the reason they use the combination of down baffles on the inside and the wool on the outside is wool is just going to be hardier. It's going to be tougher. It'll be able to deal with the elements. Down, on the other hand, if you get it wet, it's going to lose a lot of its insulating properties. Overall, a simple classic jacket that gets the job done and looks stylish doing it. Next up on the list of functional jackets, we've got the parka. The origins of this jacket is all about necessity, all about exploring, all about a man out working in temperatures down to like 60 below zero. We're talking Native American tribes up near the Arctic. They needed to be able to hunt. They need to be able to functionally move around. At the same time, they needed something that would protect them from the extreme elements, from the wind. On the outside, to protect them from the snow, to protect them from the wind, they would use a waxed skin. On the inside, they would use the fur for insulation. Nowadays, most modern parkers are using using synthetic materials. Right here on the inside, I've got a synthetic down. On the outside, I've got a synthetic polyester that's basically going to be water and wind resistant. You really want to pay attention to the wind resistance. This is where the parka really shines, is not only does it cover a larger portion of the body than most jackets out there, but the outside is going to be made from a material that isn't going to allow the wind to penetrate. In addition, the hood is going to do a great job of closing things up and protecting the neck. Parkers also pay attention to the small details because those small details matter. So, right here on the front, I've got three 
closing systems. Why do you have two zippers and also buttons? Because you don't want any wind to penetrate, so it's going to do a good job of sealing the entire jacket up. In addition, right over here, even though this is a synthetic, it still does the old job of actually breaking up the wind in and around the face. And when I've worn this in extreme cold temperature, I do notice a difference. It just does a great job of keeping the air and I feel it keeps my face just a bit warmer. Combine that with big pockets down at the bottom and pockets a bit higher for your hands. The Parka is the ultimate cold weather jacket. Now, Jets, I know you got an opinion. I want to hear from you down in the comments. Which jacket style should I have added to this video? Let me know down below. The next jacket every man needs to own is go-to default jacket. The jacket that you don't have to think about, you simply put on, matches everything you wear. Now, for me, I've got a couple jackets that fit this category. This one right here is a quilted car coat. What I love about this, it's got big functional pockets. It's a dark color. It's got a hood that I've actually never pulled out, but it gets the job done. Whenever I'm leaving the house, it's sitting there hanging up and I just grab it. It's going to look great with jeans. I could actually throw, you know, a nice shirt underneath this. Uh, I could wear it with a t-shirt. I've even worn this thing with sweats, but that's pretty rare. Point being is I wear this jacket with pretty much anything. I like the way it looks. It dresses things up a bit, makes my whole outfit feel a bit more complete and living in an area that gets relatively cold weather for about half the year, this is a great just default jacket when it's below freezing but not cold enough to wear a parka. But maybe you got a bit of a western flair to you, then go for the Sherpa jacket. I absolutely love this one. I think it's classic in style. It's got a bit of insulation, looks like a trucker, basically looks like a jean jacket from the outside, but it's got this extra layer on the inside. If you work with your hands, you got a hundred acres and you're going to be out there feeding the animals, riding a horse, this is the kind of jacket that I envision a cowboy wearing simply because it gets the job done. You can wash it, throw it into the laundry and overall it'll take a stain and it will keep going. So overall, just a great functional work jacket. But what if you want something casual? You want something lightweight, something you can pack away and not even know is there when you're not using it? Check out the lightweight puffer jacket. One of my favorite jackets because it just gets the job done doesn't have a big footprint. You can pack it away, forget about it. When you need it, pull it out. It'll inflate itself, basically picks up air, creates the insulation that way. The only bad thing about these jackets, if they get wet, especially if they're using down, they will lose their insulating properties. But that being said, they're a great layering piece. I know I've got this one whenever I'm just, again, wearing my sweats. If I'm going to go out for a jog, if I just simply am going to go for a walk with my wife, this is the jacket I'm going to default to and occasionally to go to the grocery store to get, pick up eggs and milk. Although, don't have to pick up eggs. I've got chickens. What am I talking about? I know what some of you guys are saying. Come on, Antonio. There's tons of other styles of jackets out there. You are exactly right. And in this video, I cover a lot more styles of jackets. Pretty much every style that is out there. So, in this comprehensive video, if you want to understand all the different types of jackets out there, you want to watch this video right here. Boom. Click on it. Come on, guys. I'm tired of holding this thing up. Make it happen. Click on the video. Go check it out.